grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a true story. Um, there were two girls, Kyrie and Brielle, and they were twin girls and they were born prematurely. They weighed only two pounds each. And they were watched over very carefully in their uh, separate incubators in the NICU. Um, Kyrie put on weight right away, but Brielle struggled. She cried constantly. She was always gasping for breath, and her face often turned blue. And they tried everything. They wrapped her in blankets. Mom held her. Dad held her. Um, but nothing at all seemed to help. So a nurse in the NICU fought against the hospital's policy, and she placed the babies in the same incubator. And it was amazing what happened. Immediately, when they were together, Kyrie put her arm around her sister in a very loving embrace. And almost immediately, Brielle's um, frantic crying stopped, and her color returned, and her heart rate um, stabilized, and her temperature rose back to normal. It was just what seemed to be a miracle. Encouragement is a wonderful thing. And you know what? That's our topic for today. We're going to discuss encouragement. We continue our sermon series. It's called Equipped for Eternity. And today, the message is entitled Equipped for Encouragement. So I thought it was important that we start out and just take a look at encouragement and see just what that is. Now, if you look that up in a dictionary, there's the definition that I found. It's to support, um, to give confidence to, to um, give hope to someone. And the second definition they had there was to support someone uh, so that he or she'll do something or continue to do something. So that reminded me, that second definition, let's say, of a, of a race, right? Uh, you're supporting that individual who's running to continue and to not give up. Now, in the Bible, though, the Greek word for encouragement is parakaleo. And what that word really means is to come alongside of somebody. And so to come alongside of somebody in the sense of encouraging or comforting or consoling or cheering, inviting somebody or urging somebody to do something. It's more than, encouragement is more than just, you can do it, right? It's, it does include that, but it's so much more than that. For those who are depressed, it could take the form of cheering. For those who are upset, it can take the form of consoling. For someone who's in pain, maybe comforting. For those who are lonely, it can take the form of an invite. And for those who are ready to surrender, ready to give up, it could be an urging to continue. See, for the Christian, encouragement helps us to take our eyes off of ourselves and off of the situation that we're in and to put our eyes on Jesus. And you know what? That's exactly what Paul does for the Philippians in our first reading today, the epistle reading. Um, Philippians is an epistle of joy and of encouragement. See, Paul wrote this book uh, around A.D. 61 to 63, somewhere in that window. And he wrote it while he was in prison in Rome. Now, the Philippians were really, they were like Paul's heart. He loved them very much, and they supported him often in his ministry, even financially sending him money while he was in prison. And so this book, what it does, it starts by Paul thanking them for their gifts. He then encourages them to stand firm in the face of persecution to rejoice regardless of whatever their situation in life is, and then lastly, to strive for humility and for unity. I'd like you to open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. 
And I'd like us to read um, verses 1 and 2 together. Philippians chapter 2, and we'll start with verses 1 and 2. All right? We read together. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. So if you look at that very first line, from where does encouragement originate? It originates in Christ, right? It starts with Jesus. So it says, if there is any encouragement in Christ, and then it goes on, any comfort, any participation, etc. Now, it originates with Christ. Now, what's so interesting here is that word if, and that word if in these two passages carries on to all of these, if there's encouragement, if there's comfort, if there's participation. But what's really interesting is Paul knows that they have all these things. He's not saying, well, you may have encouragement in Jesus and you may not. So a lot of the um, translators seem to think that this would better be translated with the word since. So like since there is encouragement in Christ, since you have comfort from love, since you have participation in the Spirit, because through Christ all those things are granted to those who believe in him. And then if you, if you continue in verse 2, he says, complete my joy, which is so interesting, because while Paul is in prison, he has some joy, and that's what he's saying with those words, but he's saying you can make it even bigger, even more complete, if you do these things that I'm asking you to do. And then he says, have the same mind in the same love. And so I think we have to ask the question, same as whom, right? And the answer is same as Jesus. He's saying have the same mind as Jesus. Have the same love as Jesus. Because if they do, they also have the same mind and love with one another too, don't they? And so that's what he's encouraging them to do, have the same mind and love of Jesus. Through their trials that they're going through, Paul encourages them to take their eyes off the circumstances that are around them and to look to Jesus. Now, I think that's good advice even for us today, don't you? Because we all need encouragement from time to time, each and every one of us. Living in this broken, sin-filled world is tough. And we often get discouraged in life. Maybe you're discouraged with circumstances in your life, like health issues or money challenges. Maybe you're discouraged with your job situation or raising your children or maybe even your marriage, right? Maybe you get discouraged by failures, right? Every day, each and every one of us falls short of God's expectations and, believe it or not, our own expectations as well. And that can lead us to become discouraged. Or maybe you're discouraged by just being in this sinful world. You know, as we live in this sinful world, we're surrounded by hate and indifference and contempt and division and fighting. And that discouragement, it's enough sometimes for many people to just give up their faith. In fact, some even give up their lives and take their own lives. So where do we find encouragement? We all need it from time to time. Where do we find it? Well, as Paul said in Philippians, in that very first verse of chapter 2, we find it in Christ. Encouragement starts with God. I'd like to read a passage to you from 2 Corinthians Chapter 1, verse 3. Hear the word of the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Now you might say, 
I didn't hear the word encouragement in that passage. It's found in the word comfort. That word comfort is the very same word in Greek as the word we're discussing when we discuss encouragement. So he's the God of all encouragement. And then in Romans chapter 15, verse 5, Paul calls God the God of endurance and encouragement. You see, when we were dead in trespasses and sin, God got into the incubator with you in Christ. He became true man, right? He left his heavenly home and came down here. And he threw his arm around you and he said, I've got you. I've got this. When he became your substitute. And then Jesus touched you with his love, with his presence, with his forgiveness, with his promises, just like he did with those children in the gospel reading that Mrs. Triplett shared with the kids. He said, come here, sit on my lap. Let me bless you. Let me pray for you. Now, unlike us who want to grasp equality with God, Jesus chose not to do so. In fact, he chose to not always and fully use his power as true God. And unlike us who reject the role of God's servant, Jesus embraced that role. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And unlike us who are disobedient, Jesus became obedient even to death on a cross. And Jesus died on that cross for you so that you might have life and have it to the full. And three days later, he rose to life again. And our risen Lord now sends the Holy Spirit to you and to each and every one. Now, do you remember another name that the Bible uses for the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, I will send you another comforter, right? It's the same word. I'll send you another encourager. He, of course, being the first encourager, and he's sending his spirit and has sent his spirit to you to encourage you. You see, the spirit pulls you out of your incubator, that incubator of sin and death, and he places you with Jesus. So Jesus touches you through the water of holy baptism. Jesus touches you through his body and blood, in with and under the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper. Jesus touches you with his presence and his loving embrace found in his word. You see, the Spirit enables you to take your eyes off your circumstances and to fix them on Jesus. And so Jesus now encourages you with his presence and with his promises. He says to you, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. He says, take heart, I have overcome the world. He says, because I live, you shall live also. He says, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He says, whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. And he says, I'm with you always to the very end of the age. But encouragement isn't just something that we receive. Encouragement is something that we also give to one another. God calls us uh, to encourage one another, to build each other up, to support one another. Let's take a look at verses 3 and 4 in our text. Once again, Philippians 2, verses 3 and 4. We read together, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. He says, put others first, just like I put you first. He says, ask yourself, what does my neighbor need and what's best for my neighbor? See, encouragement begins with Jesus 
It comes down from him through his word and sacraments, and it flows to, through you to your neighbor, but also to you from your neighbor as well. Paul prayed that we might be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. And you know, that's exactly what's going on in the book of Philippians in our text today. Paul is encouraging them while he's in prison, still maintaining his joy in Christ and his desire to remain in the world so that he might encourage others with the gospel. But in the same way, he, um, so he's encouraging the Philippians, but they are encouraging him as they continue to run the race that the Lord has set before him. And you know, I have found that here as a pastor at Bethany through my years of, of serving here. You have encouraged me and Linda, especially during Linda's health issues that we've had in the last nine months. And it's meant a real lot to us. We've been uplifted by that encouragement. We've been uplifted through your kind words, through your cards that you've sent, through your prayers for us. We've been uplifted through the meals that you've sent to us, through the gifts that we've received, and, and through service that's been done for us. I've had people cut my lawn, and people do repairs in my house, and I've had people allow me the time to be able to care for Linda like she's needed. And I just want to say thank you so much uh, for that encouragement that you've shown me in word and deed. And I've also been greatly encouraged over the years when I go to visit somebody who's very close to the Lord's call. There have been many times when I go there with God's word and to pray for that person, to share that word, to encourage them with the hope we have in Christ. And so many times I end up walking away encouraged in my faith as I watch how that individual close to the Lord's call is, um, is hanging on to that hope that they have in Jesus. And so I pray that the Lord has used me in some way over the years to encourage you, even if it was just a little bit. And that's why it's so important that we gather in this place regularly, right? That we gather in God's house, in God's presence, as his children. First of all, we need the encouragement that he so desperately wants to give us. And then secondly, we are here. He wants us to encourage others and to be encouraged by others as well. So it's by the encourager, our Lord and Savior Jesus, that you are encouraged to encourage others. So through Jesus, he gives you the power to be present in the lives of your fellow believers. He gives you the power to build them up, to comfort them, to console them, to invite them, to urge them with God's word. And one ministry that we have here at Bethany that is designed to do all of those things is Stephen Ministry. Now, we haven't spoken of Stephen ministry for a while, but I think this is the, the perfect time to talk about it because that's what Stephen ministers do. They come alongside people, right? They come alongside with a caring heart, with a comforting presence, with a listening ear, and with helping hands. So if you ever find yourself in need of encouragement, you're not alone. All of us need it from time to time. Don't hesitate to reach out to that ministry here. And you can do that by contacting me. And I'd be happy to um, share your circumstance and, and your situation with one of our Stephen leaders so we can get you a Stephen minister for encouragement. Encourage others as you continue your, your race to live for Jesus, to hold on to that hope that we have in him. We all know how our story ends with him in heaven, and because we know that, 
Jesus has promised that through his help, we can get through anything. So I'd like to ask you in closing, make it a goal of encouraging just one person this week. Ask the Lord in prayer, Lord, who needs encouragement today? Open my eyes to see it. And what do you want me to do and say to encourage them? Encouragement is a wonderful thing. Amen.